Okay, my friends, I am going to start with the good news. I've been talking about this for quite some time. We accelerated light. We showed light is a particle. We showed that particle can actually separate at our venturi, which is fission. It came back together here, which is fusion, which gave an enormous increase in energetic value right here. And I believe we may be able to get free, completely free, electricity because this is exactly what CERN wants is the, that this interaction right here creating these muons which is the black balls they never change at all you see when they were attached before and they smashed here they never changed the black ball whatsoever the white turned into the showers exactly what they wanted to see the muon neutrino attached to the electron neutrino and then creating the muon which is the black ball I showed you and the electron showers the black balls stay never change whatsoever and the electrons change into the showers precisely what CERN wanted to see and exactly what we created and originally they looked exactly like this as they concussed the light came in to the venturi and exploded there Prior to exploding, we saw the black and white ball. They called it the 2H, 2P, 2P, 2H particles. 2P is the bright, bright ones, and the 2Hs are the holes. So we created separation of the, the um, powers, the positive and the negative powers, it separated. The black ball, as I showed you before, has no change whatsoever and the white goes into the showers precisely what CERN wants to see the black ball it never changes whatsoever and this is pulsed the black ball is just heavy and dense there's a tiny 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 little slit here but it forces everything to compress in this region and then the blacks they can't get through they're too big so they just keep slamming the white ones through like a basketball and they just poof 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 and they're pushing the white ones that black ones can't get through that's the separation of powers and i can show this again i keep showing it over and over sometimes i feel silly doing this so many times but nobody seems to be paying attention and here's the power part the you know 2p which is the you know particle 2h is the holes now when i said they can separate and they do you see the black ones here that's the black ones over here the white ones can see they're glowing they get smaller and bigger this is the ones that can go through the venturi the black ones don't change they never change their size whatsoever they are identical coming in as they were at the venturi the white ones exploded into the showers once again here it is boom accelerating light that's the particle that little four jobber that i showed you here it's divides that's fission and the black ones walked away from the whites it came back together here as fusion and they never changed their sizes and which is exactly what cern wanted to see and there it is right there the muon stayed the muon the electron neutrino turned into electron showers. The muon neutrino did just never changed. And that's precisely what I am showing here. The black ball stays the same. And they don't mind being on top of each other. They'll just sit right on top of each other. Have no problem with that whatsoever. The white ones want nothing to do with each other. Everything sprays apart. And that's what creates the interference patterns too. They're repulsion patterns, not interference. And here's the good news. We should be able to harvest this and get free energy. I mean, literally free energy. So that's the good news. The bad news is we got an issue with the expansion of our atmosphere. This can solve that. But I don't think we're going to be able to get away with 5G. All right. It's very upsetting to know that they understand the space is filled with these particles. They call them solar winds and this and that and all kinds of things. But they still say it's a vacuum. Well, if it was a vacuum, you couldn't account for any of this. Well, that's why we don't understand why we're overheating. They say it's carbon in the air. No, it, carbon dioxide. Remember we just talked about combustion. I think we did it. I get lost. But... 
carbon and oxygen, carbon dioxide. They say, ooh, that's the reason we're heating up. Well, yes and no. Carbon dioxide is an expansion gas. When the carbon is held together in chunks of coal and oil and all that stuff, it's, it's, it's not expanded. When it gets rapid oxidation, it expands like crazy. Well, guess what? When you boil water, it expands to 1,700 times as big as it is. That is expansion gas as well. That means we put more and more and more and more and more pressure against what's coming at us, because that's not going to stop. It's still coming at us the same way. So if we have sort of a floppy atmosphere, we're okay. It sort of spins a little here and there. We get a little rain here and there. Everything's pretty cool. But when we go... This is what we got right now. We got screaming violence in our atmosphere. And if we can't shrink this envelope, we are screwed. Okay, my friends, I'm sorry to say, but the issue that we really face with climate change is that we are scrubbing through all of the particles that are in space. And space is not a vacuum. It is saturated with particles, as I believe I have shown you. And our ionosphere at 2,700 degrees out here is scrubbing in against the particles that are rejected from the sun and all other luminous bodies. They are nothing but electronic particles and our electronic particles scrub their electronic particles creating heat 2700 degrees it comes down it's not that the carbon is keeping it inside it's the scrub that's creating this heat and the more we expand our gases the more the scrub that is the issue and in 5g is a gas expander it is a water breaker it creates steam in the atmosphere we don't even realize it but it is breaking the molecules expanding them 1700 times 1700 times is the increase in the size when you boil water and the, the frequencies they're using split water. And that's why they have to have the cell towers are so close to each other because the water is supposed to stop them. And the water in our atmosphere way up high is not supposed to allow them to come to Earth. We're putting them on Earth when our atmosphere says, no, don't, don't allow those here. Don't allow gamma rays. Don't allow ultraviolet, you know, the real heavy end of the spectrum, the powerful x-rays and all that. Keep them away. Keep out the microwaves. No, we put them right here on Earth, saturating Earth with them so we can get fast internet. That is not going to work. I'm sorry. It's just a case of too much expansion. It's worse than combustion from, from uh, um, fossil fuels. It's, well, it's every bit as bad. Okay, my friends, this is what I'm saying is the issue with our, our, our global warming. And it's the scrub of these electrons as we spin our atmosphere against this atmosphere of space, which is an atmosphere. It's not void of everything. It's not a vacuum. Same thing with the sun. It's particles in its corona scrub the space as well. And it's millions of degrees out here, 7,000 on the sun, 100 degrees here. 2,700 on our on our ionosphere. This is the problem, and I'll explain it to you. And it is water and um, um, the uh, microwave radiation is the issue. And we're putting microwaves who are not supposed to get into our Earth right here and forcing them, which creates the evaporation on the surface. It's supposed to happen out here. Now we're making it happen down here. We're really going to mess up our weather. All right, pay close attention to this because this is absolutely very, very important. We, the Earth's atmosphere, out, way out here, what it'll allow to come through that atmosphere to Earth? Well, it allows radio waves, yeah, that's allowed, microwaves up to a very little region into the microwave range. Then that's it, no more the water molecules absorb the microwaves and they split and that's what gives us our ionosphere well guess what we've made this 
microwaves down on the earth, which are exact same microwaves. Now we're down here on the face of the earth instead of out here making it. Now we got expansion down here. That's the problem. And they may not kill us, the microwaves in the air, but they will fracture water molecules, turn them into literally 1,700 times bigger, expand our atmosphere, and cause all the problems I'm about to show you. Infrared's allowed to some degree. Visible, yep, no problem. But ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray, no, stay out. You're damaging us. This is going to damage us. The Earth knows what to do. And these are the different lengths of the frequencies. And I, I show you, light is a spinner. Light spins. We see it as a wave. Of, you know, like down here, it's this wave. Back here, it's the red. And then you come down here, it's that. But it's really spinning. We see it as a wave when you look at it from the side, because we're watching white light go this way. If we were looking at it coming this way, we would see this. Now, and I can prove that because I can show it. They're on our light experiments. I'm going to show you right now. You see that? <laughs> That's light spinning. That is it right there. There's the particle. Zip! Spinning at us. Coming through the Ventura. Light spinning. Let me show you another one. All right, green and red, the same thing. This is light spinning again. You can see it's a circle. It's a, it literally is a drill bit, and it's screwing its way through the venturi. Some go way off this way, some come over this way, some, most of them come through the center. The reason these bumps are here, and they, they call them interference patterns, they're not interference patterns. This is one single slit. It's not two slits and the light waves are doing this and that. It is the light goes this way or goes that way. But when it comes through, it does not want anybody next to it. So they set up these interference patterns, which are repulsion patterns. You stay there, I'll stay here. You stay there, I'll stay here. And that's what these set up coming through here. So that's the other issue. There's not flappy waves. It's single slit. So, and, and they just say, oh, that's what they call diffraction. No, that's what they call spinning light. Like I said, the good news, good news is we were able to create the muons and electron showers, which is fission and fusion. That's free energy. And this is what we need to do. But somebody's got to create this Venturi again. We created it long ago, years ago, and we lost the tune. And we just don't have time to do this. We don't have the equipment or the time. This was actually just a lucky accidental tuning that happened. And then we could see all of the separation exactly like CERN wanted to see. But nobody would pay any attention. That was six, six seven years ago. So somebody's got to do this again. We're not going to do it again. Rod doesn't have time. I don't have time. We don't have the equipment. We don't have any money. We don't have any resources. It was an accident waiting to be recreated. They know about this at Cornell, about the 2P2H. Nobody will respond to me because I've been put into the never-never land. They don't like the things I say, and therefore I've been blocked virtually everywhere. I'm spam lists. Somebody's got to get this out. I'm, I've been told that they now don't allow my stuff to even be shared. So what can I say? There's a few people that follow me, and that's where it ends. So, And this is where the world's going to end if we don't get this something done about free energy. There's no other way out. No other way out. And trying to create steam to think that that's going to create a big help, that's just going to be just as bad as burning stuff. And they're talking about using steam engines, basically, in airplanes. All that's going to do is just be just as bad as creating combustion. It's expansion. It's not carbon. Don't forget now, physicists have no idea why it's so hot at the corona. It's millions of degrees out here and 7,000 on the surface of the sun. It's the scrub of where we are just cascading through the universe on the arm of the galaxy of the Milky Way and at the same time rotating and spinning and pulling forward a ton of scrub and rub and spin and it's all a surface just like a tire scrubbing on a, on a pavement and spinning against it like burning out all the time. That's why it's 2,700 degrees out here and only 100 or so on the surface. In between, it goes to minus like 60 or something in between. Well, how could it get so hot out here again if it wasn't the scrub? Carbon wouldn't create that. It's insane. It's the scrub.
So if we don't get a hold of the scrub, we're in trouble. I don't care what they do. If they think they can, can combust gases of water, which is what they're talking about now, creating huge increases in, you know, water, steam to to drive things all they're going to do is do is exactly the same thing they do when they combust carbon dioxide and water molecules are going to expand creating more and more turmoil in the atmosphere and heavy rains and all of that business so they need to think more about what the real interaction of space on the earth's atmosphere is all right so this says it all when water evaporates, it expands 1,600 times larger in volume to become steam. Whenever you boil anything, it becomes steam and increases its, its region of space that it occupies, just like it blows up on a balloon around our atmosphere. 5G will saturate the planet with 1,600 times larger volume just identical to burning and combusting fossil fuels. This is not going to help. This 5G is it's wonderful to play your games faster and get get faster information. I love it, but this is not going to work well for the planet and, and, and our future. It's a disaster, and it's the, the cause of global warming is expansion of gases. That is ex right there, expands 1,600 times. I don't have to go any further with that. We really have to have a broadening of the science and have to have a forum of different people being able to respond to other people about this. This is kind of crazy. We're destroying the planet because of these little isolated pockets of science that says, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do Well, what does it do to the rest of the world? What is it doing to the plants and the animals and the bees and the, the bacteria and so forth? Even in the medical industry, there's just not enough discussion. In the, I don't know how this can ever take you. <laughs> right, let me explain this. As water boils, its hydrogen bonds are broken. Steam particles move very far apart and fast. Barely any hydrogen bonds have the time to form. What's happening is expanding 1,700 times when you boil water. And what it is doing is breaking the hydrogen bonds. What breaks the hydrogen bonds? microwave radiation just like in your your microwave oven it shakes the water enough to where the steam forms steam increases the size of the water 1700 times that is extreme expansion what does that extreme expansion do it increases the envelope surrounding our atmosphere or our earth the atmosphere goes out like a balloon scrubbing harder and harder that just makes more and more tornadoes lightning is nothing more than a whole batch of extra electrons condensation is the crushing of the atmosphere because it's just rubbing harder and harder so you get a lot more rain and flooding and all that business in certain areas wherever the land masses seem to crush as they spin and force the atmosphere to compress in the you know coastal regions are going to be absolutely terrible, and then there's going to be air, other areas where it will just totally arid because the 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 moisture will be completely condensed out of the atmosphere prior to getting to where it normally would rain. Normally, you have sort of a fluidy sort of a blanket around the earth of atmosphere. Well, when you compress that, and another, expansion is nothing more than kind of compression. It's like a balloon getting harder and harder as you blow it up. When you, a balloon's real gooey, you can move it around. But when you pump air and it gets hard, and that is what we got right now is a hard balloon around our earth, and that is causing the, all of the problems with global warming. And it's not necessarily carbon. It's expansion. And 5G is a real expander.